We are going to be talking about what you should do about itchy scalp. This applies for people that have started locks, especially um, because it's just like your scalp is just like, what's happening? Why am I exposed? Why, why am I out here in the elements? And it just starts itching like crazy. So definitely itchy scalp is a common kind of normal thing with starter locks, but itchy scalp also transcends throughout the journey. Okay. So I first want to like normalize it. It happens. Um, it's not to say that you have necessarily done something wrong or something is wrong with your locks or your journey. No, itchy scalp, it just happens. But I do want to specifically talk about five reasons that may cause itchy scalp. And then we're going to get into some treatments for itchy scalp. So there are areas in your scalp, particularly like your crown area, like right in here, the top part of your head, it's your crown, your hairline, and your nape. For most people, again, it's not everybody, but for most people, one of those three areas, or sometimes all three of those areas, are your stress spots or like where stress or anxiety show up for you. And so it can cause in those particular spots, itchiness, tenderness. Um, it can also feel like you're not getting any relief no matter what you're doing. And a lot of times people start doing things you're not supposed to be doing, like putting a bunch of oils into it. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but in those areas, it's not something that is showing up because of what you which where your hair is or what your what's going on with your hair as much as it is what's going on with your hormones and your stress levels and your anxiety and what's happening around you so please keep that in mind um when you have itchiness in your scalp so the stress is definitely one one reason or one cause of itchy scalp another big huge cause of itchy scalp that I feel like nobody speaks on or acknowledges is allergies, like food allergies. Like if you have um, an allergy that you might not even know of. I know when I, after I had my first child, when I tell you I went to the doctor just for a random follow-up and he was like, oh, you're the one that has all the food allergies. I was like, I have no food allergies. What are you talking about? I eat everything. And they were like, no, you have food allergies. I was like, I don't have food allergies. Like, how are you going to tell me? I've been in my whole body for 25 years. Like, I don't have any food allergies. They ran my blood work for whatever reason after having first child. I had developed like eight different food allergies. And I'm talking like, I have to carry an EpiPen for these allergies. Came out of nowhere. And I've also met so many women um, and men who have, as they begin to age, because we're not getting older, we're aging randomly, they get food allergies. And so you may be trying to topically treat or like grab this oil, grab this thing. Oh, I saw this on the gram. Oh, I, I saw this. I want to try this for my scalp. And the whole time your body is trying to tell you like, you need to get this checked out. You are causing us issues. Um, we don't like what you're doing to us and it's trying to talk to you through your scalp, but you're not acknowledging it. You're just trying to like put, put it away with our hair. We have been taught so often to just reach for something, reach for a product. Um, what, what's the quick fix for it? And it's like our hair and especially our locks, like our crown will tell us it, it gives us warnings to all the other things that are happening. So please keep that in mind. Allergies can be a big one. Stress can be a big thing. Uh, the other thing, and I'm going to get real with you guys because I love you. We're family. We're a community. When was the last time you washed your bonnet? Like, when was the last time you just, you know, threw it in the wash, cleaned it a little bit? 
your bonnet, even though you're sleeping, you may be sweating, you may be emitting different hormones. Um, it just might just, you know, just it just might be dirty. You know that one time last month or two months ago, you decided not to wash your hair for three weeks and you haven't washed your bonnet just yet? You know, it's kind of just showing up back in your scalp. So, yeah, please wash your bonnet. Every time you wash your hair, wash your bonnet. <laughs> Pandora says in your pillowcase too, I would highly suggest it because your skin, your face would thank you for that. Another reason that itchy scalp shows up for a lot of us is sweat. Whether you're um, going through the change, uh, whether you exercise every week, like, or every day, every other day, if you're sweating in your scalp, when you let the sweat dry on your scalp, because you're really not supposed to do that, but if you do let the sweat dry on your scalp, sweat causes salt deposits. And we know with too much salt, like think about when you go swimming in the ocean or things like that, if you leave it in your scalp, what happens? You start itching, your skin gets dry, everything's just like, oh, what's happening, what's happening? And you wanna put your hands in your hair, but you don't want to do that with your locks. OK, you do not want to let sweat sit on your scalp. Do not want to let your scalp get dry. So I say all that to say um, here or not to say to offer a few solutions for your itchy scalp. Number one. Don't use your hands. Don't use your hands to scratch your scalp. I feel like we talked about this a couple broadcasts ago, but when you scratch your scalp with your hands, your nails are abrasive. They are protein. They can be jagged. You can, even though you may not see it, you may have just filed your nails. My nails need to be done, so I'm not going to put my fingers in the camera. But even though you may have just filed your nails, there still be maybe some rough free edges that when you go in and scratch your scalp, it can start breaking, popping hairs. You don't want that to happen. So if it becomes a situation where you have to put your hands in your hair, you're just like, I got to wash my hair. I got to wash my hair. Gloves. OK, put some gloves on. Wash your hair. Number two or not even number two, using a tool. So some people have combs, like rat tail. Uh, I know some people use pins and highlighters, like just whatever you're grabbing. As long as it's not jagged, definitely better than your hands. This is a scalp revitalizer. And see, it's like curved for the shape of your head. You can get in there, get under the lock where all the itching is. You know, this is one of those things that I feel like keep one in your car, keep one by your bed, keep one in the bathroom. Just gives you a really good scalp massage. And it lets you get under the lock without disrupting the locking process, okay? So please be careful with using your hands to wash your hair. Um, the next thing that I want to um, point out, please, again, don't reach for oils. Don't um, just try to put something very topical in your hair to try to solve the problem. Instead of applying lots of oils, you want to reach for a moisture-based product, specifically an astringent. And I say that because with scalp conditions like cerebral dermatitis, scalp psoriasis, um, dandruff, putting more oil to the scalp is only going to make the problem worse. Because what's happening at your scalp that's causing the itching, if you're putting oil on it, you're feeding it. And so it's going to make it, it's going to make your skin cells turn over more, which is going to cause more itching, which is going to cause more flaking, which can cause more flakes. Like don't do the oil. Okay. Most scalp conditions, your regimen is minimal oil, if at all, it's it, especially direct to the scalp. Okay. One of the questions I have tonight from the text club, hey, text club, if you're not part of the text club, the digital text club, get head over to curlydogrowth.com backslash community and join us there. But with the question or one of the questions I have tonight is like, can I apply oils to the scalp? 
have to be very careful about that, okay? So minimize the use of oils, don't use your hands, and reach for an astringent. So um, Tiffany asks, what type of astringent? So astringent is basically the term for something that is going to cleanse. And a common astringent that is often used for your scalp is witch hazel. That's a, a really common um, herbal natural solution for um, scalp itching. If you're going to get rich hazel, please make it source alcohol free. Uh, I use sea breeze. And so I was going to say that, but the issue with sea breeze is that sea breeze has alcohol in it. And so you're already talking about your scalp is itchy, putting alcohol to your scalp can dry it out. And so, yes, I do agree with you. Yes, it's going to um, help alleviate the itching, but then you might put yourself in a place where you're tr then trying to combat dryness from the um, from the sea breeze. So if it's working for you, you know, yes, do what works for you. Um, but that's something you want to keep in mind. Pure scalp, you guys, um, pure scalp is a moisturizing astringent, okay? Formulated it specifically for us with locks and for those of us that are exercising all the time and needing relief. It also helps to deodorize the scalp. And um, you don't want to put anything again in there that's gonna cause cause of dryness. All right, um, Meredith, also part of the text club says, what can I do to combat my patches of psoriasis on my scalp and take care of my locks in the best way possible? You, first of all, you don't wanna like pick at your patches with your, uh, with like a comb or anything because that abrasion can make it worse. Think of scalp psoriasis like cradle cap for a baby. When babies have cradle cap and it's left untreated, so it stays there for a while, or you try to pick at it, the patches come up, but it takes the hair with it. And so that's the same thing that can happen as an adult with psoriasis. You can take patches of hair out of the head if you're not careful how you are dressing it. So um, what your regimen looks like is going to include a, a medicated shampoo for sure. I would highly recommend a medicated shampoo because that can help manage it. So uh, you don't have um, a lot of flares. Like I have guests and I've seen people with scalp psoriasis, like severe scalp psoriasis, manage it to the point where it doesn't even show up because we're so on top of it. But if you try to have a regimen, like uh, I would say 90% as relates to locks, which is, oh, I wash my hair, I retwist it, or I interlock it, and I don't wash my hair again for a whole nother month, you're going to be in a world of trouble. That cannot be your story. Have to uh, adjust your regimen to align with what is happening with your scalp and get into a better space. The medicated shampoo can come from a dermatologist. So here's another thing. Don't self-diagnose yourself. You may think you have scalp psoriasis. You may think you have dandruff, but please go to a dermatologist to find out what exactly is going on because a true diagnosis can um, tell you what you need to do to again, get to a space where it's managed and you're not constantly like responding to it. So go to a dermatologist, number one. You can get over the counter medicated shampoos just in the meantime, if you don't have insurance or whatever the issue is. I know a lot of dermatologists are booked out for like months at this point, but um, medicated shampoo, medicated shampoo, medicated shampoo. Okay, be very mindful of oils. Um, in the New Growth Academy, it's called Scalp Care and Irritation Solutions for scalp conditions, dandruff, psoriasis, um, cerebral dermatitis, um, any issue that is dealing with the scalp. I teach you how to, how to address it 
and what products and regimens you should follow to keep your scalp in the best way possible. The reason why I do not offer that um, like on YouTube or something like that is because this is going to stay on YouTube forever. How long? What if something that's in there is not something that I know I can recommend? I want to be able to directly speak to you and I want to be able for us to have open line of communication because maybe something I have in there is not going to work for you. And because you're in the academy, we can adjust accordingly. I cannot do that with just anybody on YouTube. So that is the reason why some of the things that I speak about are not just on the internet. They are actually in my academy. Oh, natural said, I had no idea I had a scalp condition until my loctician told me to go see a dermatologist. I thought I was just terrible at shampooing for years. See, exactly, exactly. And that's why, again, this conversation I felt like was so important because itchy scalp, coupled with our hair trauma, coupled with um, not even understanding the holistic um, approach to caring for our hair and our scalp, which is including thinking about food allergies, thinking about uh, your bonnet and when the last time you washed it, thinking about your stress, thinking about how you um, acknowledge and listen to your scalp, thinking about when the sweat dries on your scalp, how much that's going to impact your locks um, that day, a week from now, or two weeks from now, whenever you wash your hair. So yes, I am glad that um, we had an opportunity to speak on it. So um, with that being said, check the description box on YouTube to um, get the links. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe so you don't miss the next live broadcast. And also just so we can stay connected because you know, the internet is full of all types of people, but I'm your digital optician. So I want to stay a part of your journey as much as I want you to stay a part of my journey. So go ahead and hit subscribe. And next week, I haven't decided on the topic, but I know that the text club has sent me lots of questions um, to go through. So I will have one of those for us next week. And I'm here every Thursday. Cam, this, you hold me down every week. Please like the video. I always forget that. But yeah, like the video, share the video, most importantly. Um, because you can help a friend. You know, we are here. I am here to help you cultivate the healthiest set of locks possible. I believe that you want that for yourself and others. So share. Sharing is caring. Peace, love, and good vibes. And let me know.